Wait, tell you about pushing up against me, you understand me? Stop the laughter. Stop the laughter. Get it done. Welcome back to the Lackluster Channel. There are very few who are absolute victims. A person's decisions and actions serve as great predictors of what trauma they may encounter in life. It is often noted that the only true victims are children, as they have the least amount of autonomy and authority to make choices that steer their journey. In the year 2020, Officer Tyler Williams of the Fort Myers Police Department initiated a traffic stop on a vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed. A cursory inspection of the cab found two women and a three-year-old child. The vehicle was littered with paraphernalia, which prompted Officer Williams to remove the two adult occupants. I'm, I'm gonna be straight with you guys, all right? What we have now, I have felony charge on both of you guys. I'm so right, sorry. Listen, I saw this anyone's going to jail yet, all right? Anything that we can do okay, to stop Because I have a bag. I don't know. I don't f with Matt. That's one thing I don't. $5 worth. I, I don't. F with hair. All right, I do, but no, I listen, don't. Listen, listen, listen. All right, I'm, I don't buy your, I don't buy your I haven't used in a couple months. Then. I, I'm just being straight with you. Okay, okay. I understand. I understand. All right, I got used needles in the purse. All right, it's not your purse anymore. It's just found in the car. Well, listen, all right, there's needles all over the car. There's loaded needles all over the car with hair on the side. All right, I got a bag of crystal inside the car. Oh, my God. Okay. I have a three-year-old child inside the car. Gun. Okay. Can now, you call FPNL and let them know that the traffic is so, ready. All they need is power. Hooks so I'm, I'm going to put this in reality for you and hopefully, hopefully we can change our habits in the future. All right? Because I promise you, you live in Cape, supposedly, and you live out in the Gateway, supposedly. All right? I didn't just start the job yesterday. All right. Whoever you met up at the tr golf view, or yeah, golf view. All right. I'm gonna put money on the. You should bought that bag of ice there. One of you guys. All right. Again, I'm not saying I'm taking you to jail. All right, because we're gonna have a whole come to Jesus that we're gonna change our lifestyle because I don't need this in front of a child. All right. Because ultimately, what's gonna happen is I would take you both, build the car, and the state takes a child. All right. <laughs> And that's just the reality of the situation because you're going to have felony narcotics in the same vehicle as a sleeping three-year-old. All right? That little girl, it's a beautiful little girl. She does not deserve that. All right? And that's solely based on your actions as her, her, her parent and mother. I'm not sending DCF anywhere. Okay? At the end of the night, you guys are getting out of here with your child in this car. Okay? Well, I'm going to document everything that is found in the car within 10 feet of your child. All right? And you driving. All right? The needle's in plain view. Right, I can see it standing outside of your car, lean up against your leg with a cap next to you. All right, I got a bag of ice in the middle of both of you guys. All right, this is a freebie I'm giving you. All right, I'm feeling gracious for some reason. I don't know why, okay? And I, ultimately, I really don't feel like dealing with DCF at six o'clock in the morning, okay? So, and that goes for you as well, all right? I don't, I'm sure you don't have a car, you don't have a license, but I'm sure you get around to whoever needs to drive you, okay? So, get to where you guys are going. When you get home, I would probably detail your car, okay? I would vacuum everything, I would get all the crumbs out, I'd get the shake that's in there out of there, all right? The wasted beef jerky on the pasture floor, we're gonna get out of there, all right? I'm sure we will see each other again soon, all right? Thank you. Let's have it a pleasurable experience, not where we're at here, all right? So, thank God, thank you, you gotta do that I'm feeling this way and I wanna go home, okay? So with that being said, get your crap up the sidewalk and get out of here. Three months after Officer Williams allowed the women to leave so that he could get off work on time, three-year-old Serenity Robbins died when her mother was driving under the influence and crashed. The mother was arrested and charged with aggravated manslaughter of a child, DUI manslaughter, and driving on a suspended license. But her criminal investigation flagged the traffic stop in which Williams allowed the same woman to leave. Officer Williams was placed on paid administrative leave while the department investigated, but he was quickly moved to unpaid leave and then fired after an arrest warrant resulted in criminal charges for knowingly and willfully failing to report known or suspected child abuse, abandonment, or neglect as a mandatory reporter. A third degree felony. Ultimately, I really don't feel like dealing with DCF at 6 o'clock in the morning. Thank God, thank you, you gotta do that I'm feeling this way and I wanna go home. Okay, so with that being said, get your crap up the sidewalk and get out of here. However, shortly after the arrest of Officer Williams, the criminal charges were dismissed by a judge. The details at this point are unclear, 
but the police union fought for Williams to get his job back. And while he never returned to the Fort Myers Police Department, he was quickly hired by the Hendry County Sheriff's Office, where on July 4th of 2023, he arrested an intoxicated man suspected of burglary. Former Deputy Williams placed the suspect in handcuffs and walked the man to the rear of his police vehicle to conduct a search. Sir, I did Stop not. Stop talking. No, what, what do you mean? You were in the back. Come on, oh, bruh. <laughs> bruh. Bruh. Please don't let me get my car. Oh, my you God. If you gets me again, I'm going to throw your ass back on this asphalt. You understand No, me? sir, I understand Do you that. understand me? I, I, Fantastic. Respectfully. Respectfully. So. Former Deputy Williams' supervisor was also on the scene, and the two had a conversation about the events leading to the suspect being placed in handcuffs. Um, no, Sorry, sir, I do not. I, 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 will, I, will push, I will put my I'm sandal back up there. All of a sudden, um, a log comes hitting the window in my face. I'm like, oh, okay. No, so sir. I'm like, I'm down. He's standing there with the log, actively bashing the window as I am trying to put it back in. I do not. I am I, fully lit in this bedroom. Okay. During this conversation, the suspect attempted to talk to former Deputy Williams and to interject himself into the conversation on multiple occasions. In response to one of those times, former Deputy Williams grabbed the man by the shoulders and threw him to the ground. Well, you're inside. You, 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 were, you were inside. The, you were inside. Yo! Wait, tell you about pushing up against me. You understand me? Handcuffed, the victim was unable to brace himself for the fall. <clears throat> Former Deputy Williams threw the man to the ground with sufficient force that he was rendered unconscious after his chin hit the asphalt. The supervisor does nothing to stop Williams, but makes a call for EMS. <laughs> it causes the corrupt agency's dispatcher to laugh while responding to Williams. Stop the laughter. Get it done. Inside, she's holding the blinds up for me so I can attempt to replace the window and put it back into its tracks. Mm -hmm. Subject's not Subject conscious. Not conscious here. And uh, as I'm putting it back, boom! I'm like, what the hell is that? Look up, the log, I'm smacking the window. I'm like, what the f okay. Gun comes out, gun light, he's standing there, no, 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 no. Hits it a third time. I'm like, I'm bring it back. Come outside. Sheriff's office, come here. He turns around, whoa, and takes off running across the street. I'm like, Oh, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Just lay on your side. Holy fuck. 1182, 1013. Just lay on your stomach. Yeah, lower your stomach. Uh, can you put in the notes we found on the cell phone? Just looking for the wallet now. <laughs> in April of 2024, Nine months after this incident, U.S. Attorney Roger Hanberg finally brought charges of unreasonable use of force and obstruction of justice after Deputy Williams falsified his report to cover up his wrongdoing and to justify his potentially lethal actions. Last week, a federal grand jury sitting here in Fort Myers, Florida, returned a criminal indictment against former <clears throat> Deputy Williams, charging him with two counts. One count which is a civil rights violation, and a second count, which is a count for obstructing justice by falsifying a police report. These are merely allegations and former Deputy Williams is to be presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty. The charges that have been brought against him in federal court are serious. He is facing up to 30 years in federal prison. 
for some reason, after announcing the charges, as if he felt bad about having to actually charge a cop and needed to apologize to the law enforcement community for doing so. U.S. Attorney Hanberg then uses this press release concerning a state actor abusing a detainee to bring up various incidents regarding attacks on law enforcement, most of which occurring during lawful arrests. This case is an excellent example of how my office, through our partnerships with our local and federal law enforcement agencies, seeks to hold accountable those in positions of public trust. But we are equally committed to protecting those persons when their safety is jeopardized. Law enforcement officials and public servants should not be threatened with harm for doing their jobs. The work that they do is important, and my office is firmly committed to protecting them. <clears throat> In just the last two years, for example, my office has criminally prosecuted a number of cases involving assaults against law enforcement officers. We've obtained a federal indictment of a defendant who forcibly was alleged to have used knives during an arrest against federal agents. We have obtained convictions in federal court of two defendants who assaulted federal corrections officers. And we secured a guilty plea from a defendant who opened fire on federal agents and police officers during a high-speed chase. The protections of my office and our law enforcement partners extend to every civil servant. For example, in December, my office announced the filing of two federal complaints charging five individuals with armed robberies of United States postal letter carriers. In a separate case, another defendant was sentenced to more than nine years in federal prison after robbing a letter carrier at gunpoint. To put what he just did into perspective, it would be similar to him announcing charges against a bank robbery suspect that was caught on film, and to continue by listing how many charges he's levied against law enforcement officers over the years. The two have nothing to do with each other. One involves a citizen attacking a government employee in hopes that they might remain free from prosecution. Pretty crappy. The other is a government agent attacking a citizen without due process and then lying about the incident to cover it up and escape justice. Also crappy, yet one of the two examples wields a much greater power and is far more dangerous if left unchecked. It almost appears as if US Attorney Hanberg made these statements during this press release to tell the law enforcement agencies whose side he's on. The civil rights prosecution that is being announced here today and the other cases that I've mentioned reflect my office's commitment to fairly enforcing the law. We are dedicated to holding individuals in trusted positions accountable for their actions and we are equally committed to ensuring that they receive our protections when they are threatened or attacked. Our pursuit of justice is unwavering. I stand before you here today with a firm commitment in fostering accountability and restoring trust in our institutions. Next, the man in charge of the agency responsible for hiring Williams, after having been fired from Fort Myers, takes to the podium to talk about trust. Good evening. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Um, but I tell you what, I when I watched the uh, body camera, I was shocked and I was appalled. You know, when uh, we swear a deputy in, he has great power, and with that comes great responsibility. And what I saw on this body camera, it violated the trust of our community. And that, that trust is so sacred, and we work very hard to keep that trust between our deputies and our, our community of Hendry County, uh, which is one reason why we have body cameras, because it, it, it documents everything that they do. And, you know, initially when I saw this, again, shock and awe, um, he was placed on administrative leave immediately. Uh, we forwarded it over to the, uh, the United States attorneys for a, a federal investigation, and uh, he was ultimately terminated. So I, I just want to thank uh, the attorneys for the, the job that they did and for the cooperation. So uh, with that, I just hope that the community knows that, that we will still strive to keep that trust within our community. Thank you. As we've seen time and time again, cases like this are often underwhelming and the state's enforcement arm is granted leniency. They often plead down decades in prison to a misdemeanor with probation. The sentencing hearing for former officer Matthew Schneider. This grainy video from the courtroom's video system. The sentencing comes five years after Schneider lied about seeing a blinker violation. <laughs> 
and then repeatedly tasered Johnny Weecroft. He kicked him twice while handcuffed and then pulled down his pants and stunned him. Schneider accepted a plea deal from the Arizona Attorney General's office, and this is what he told the judge ahead of his sentencing. Your Honor, I am standing before the court today as something in a million years that I would have never dreamed I'd be a convicted criminal. As you know, I come from a law enforcement family. It's hard to describe the shame I felt telling the people who raised me and were excellent role models that I'd be pleading guilty today. It was even harder when I had to tell my kids. I accept full responsibility for my actions on July 26, 2017. I tried to do my absolute best as a police officer and a human being that day and it wasn't good enough. Hey, get in front of the car right now. Get in front of the car. Come on. You're all right. Judge Patricia Stott right, expressed on. sympathy for Schneider. You suffered for the last five and a half years the consequences of what happened. Your family has suffered the consequences of what happened. You want it again? Shut your mouth! Yes, I'm done f***ing around with you! Here's a timeline of the case. The crime, July 2017. Nearly two years later, we publicly exposed the video in February 2019. Former Governor Doug Ducey called for a new investigation, but criminal charges would not come until 2021. And before that, Schneider forfeited his certification, and Glendale approved an accidental disability claim, allowing him to retire with a pension and benefits. What not a lot of people do is you picked yourself up, you found something else, and you're now excelling at that. So I would see no purpose whatsoever to put you on probation. I see what's happened in the last five and a half years and the loss of your career as a very severe punishment that's already happened to you. Schneider was originally facing three felony aggravated assault charges. Again, his plea deal is for a single misdemeanor disorderly conduct charge. No jail, no probation, but Judge Starr did order Schneider to pay fines and fees, totaling $115. And that's gonna be my sentence. I think it's time for everybody to move on. Um, I have no doubt that you're gonna continue to have a huge impact in your community just as you have for so many years. For this incident, we'll have to wait and see how the case pans out, which will probably take years. I'll provide updates as they come around, but until then, be sure to check out another episode linked on screen.